Hi, welcome back to another tutorial in our SQL database application. In this tutorial, we're going to work with joins. So if you look at the table of contents of all the things that we've learned, we're up to the end of row two here. So table joins is the ability to take uh, two tables and put them together. Here's the entire playlist of everything that we're learning, so make sure that you stick around for the rest of it. My name is Shad Sluter, and I teach software development at Grand Canyon University. So I'm welcoming you to come to class with me in this virtual way so that you can become a professional developer. So let's get started with this next section. So this is how the application is going to look by the time we're done with this video. So you can see that if I click an item up on the top section, I have an album title. And then when I click it, the bottom table is refreshed so that it includes the tracks. So for instance, the help album has three tracks in it, it has help the the night before and then ticket to ride so I can't play the video yet there's gonna be a video player over here soon so this is where we're going we're gonna have a second table of data that depends on the items that are in the first table so in the first section here we're going to add a few items to our form so let's start with the user interface design so the first thing I need to do is add a label and then another grid view so I'm just going to drag in a label and then after I put it there, I'm going to give it a new name. So it's going to have the text as tracks. And then below that, let's put in a new data grid view class or a new object. And uh, we'll resize it so that we leave some space over on the right side because we're going to put a video player there eventually, but not in this video, but coming up soon. So that's the only changes we have to make to the user interface. So the most of the work here in this part is going to go in the code where we fetch data. So the part I want to work on first is in the albums DAO. So let's just refresh our memory what albums DAO has. I'm going to select the first item and collapse it and then the second method. And so we have search, we have add, and we have get all. So those are the three things that we see here. So we're going to make another item here that will fetch all of the tracks from the database that match an album. Now, if you recall from the previous tutorial, we created this foreign key relationship. So that way we have tracks that have an album ID number in their table. So that's how we're able to make this work. So I like to reuse code and then manipulate it so I don't have to type so much. So I'm going to copy all of the lines for the method for searching for albums. So let's select everything from the top to the bottom. And I'm going to paste this new method down at the bottom of the uh, class. Then I'd have, I need to rename it. So I go back up to line 122, it looks like, in my file. And I'm going to name this thing as get track for album or get tracks for album. And the parameter that we're going to expect to be provided here is an integer. So we're going to get the album ID and return a list of tracks. So that'll be similar to searching for a name, but uh, a few changes. So let's make those changes now. So the first change we're going to make is we're going to return a list of tracks instead of a list of albums. So I replace the word album with track, and you can see that the computer doesn't know what a track is yet. We haven't defined that. We've just made a database full of tracks, but we haven't given our object to our application. So usually those two things go together. So let's make one. So I'm going to go to the suggestions. So I hover over track and shows uh, potential items. And it says here, generate um, track. And it says, where would you like to put that? I'm going to select the first item, which is in a new file. So I select that. And over here, you can see that track is now defined. So it has no properties. We can put those in now. But that was just one way to make a new class. So let's go put all the properties in that are in our database. So the first property of the class is the ID number, which is an integer. And then I'm going to get the next suggestion, which is a string with a name. So the name of the track is our second property. The third property is going to be the number, which is the track number on the album, which is an integer. And then we go on to the video URL. The video URL is a string. And then finally, we have a lyrics uh, property which is also a string. So we define all these things and now we're able to create new instances of tracks. So let's go ahead and save this and go back into the DAO class. So I switch back into DAO and you can see that now track is defined. So there is no error on line 125. 
We're not going to do any searching by name, so I'm going to delete this wild phrase. Now here's where the main part is going to take effect. So we are going to erase this select statement and change it with another one. So what I want to select then is every th all the columns, so star, from the tracks table. And I'm going to have a where statement where we have a match of the album ID to some placeholder here. So we'll call it at album ID. So let's double check to make sure I got the right column name here because I'm not quite sure that album ID is what I actually chose. So let's go back into the MySQL admin and take a look at tracks. And you can see that albums underscore ID over here is the actual name. So that's incorrectly typed in my code. So let's correct it here and I'll say albums underscore ID. Make sure that the column name matches this property here. The next line down, we have to define what the parameter is. So it's at albums ID is the placeholder that I used in the previous line. And then I have a parameter called album ID. Now, just to prove that I got that right, let's scroll up just a few lines to see where that comes from. So that's coming from here on line 122. So we're passing an integer in, which has to be valid. So we're going to get down to the for loop now, or the while loop, where we do the reading of each line. Uh, we're no longer reading albums. This is adapting to tracks now. So let's change the type from album A to be track, and we'll use T for a placeholder name. Now we can erase all of the properties that we used for album and replace them. So we we'll go through the list of the, anything that's in the table. First of all, it's the ID, then it's the name, then it's the number, then I believe it was the uh, URL for the video, and then finally the lyrics. And so those are all properly given to us with this nice type ahead help from Visual Studio. The last item where we add something to the list of return these is instead of A, we're going to change it to T because we're changing tracks. Now it looks like I'm done, except I've got a strange error at the bottom. Let's see what that is all about. It says here, um, we've got a problem. It says you're trying to return uh, tracks and you were promising albums. So let's scroll up to see at the top of the function to see what's going on here. So in this line here on 122, the data type for the return says album, and that's supposed to be tracks. So I think that's everything we need. So this function here, or this method, should be able to fetch all the tracks given an album's ID number. Now, we can't test this out yet in the uh, user interface, otherwise I would go and run it now. We need to add something else so that way we can produce the proper output. Okay, so let's start at the top now of our Form 1 program and look what we did to set up the data grid view. We had to have something called a binding source. So let's create a binding source for the second grid. So I'm going to name this thing as Tracks Binding Source and we'll just instantiate a new instance of it. Let's steal some other code. So if you looked at this button click, we had a data source from the get all albums and then assigned it to the binding source. So uh, we're not going to go through all that again. I'm just going to borrow this and modify it. So let's copy here and let's come down to the bottom now. Whenever we click the grid, we want to be able to update the binding source for the second grid. So let's go ahead and paste in some things that we had before. So instead of albums binding source, I'm going to have it as tracks binding source. And then you can see that albums DAO is undefined inside of this function. So let's create a new instance of it now. So we got a new instance, and then we're going to redefine the function that we're using just on the next line. So the function that we created earlier, or the method, is called get tracks for album. And then inside the parentheses, we need a we need an album number. Well, we've just clicked something on the grid, that's why we're in this function here, and we need to get something from the click. So we have it right up here. It's on row 45. This is telling me which row was clicked. So we'll just use that. So what I want to get out of the data grid is the number or the ID number of the album. So I can get that by saying go to the data grid view, get the rows, tell me which row was clicked, then I'm going to get column 0. So that is cells bracket 0 and then give me the value of that. So that should be an integer because the first column tells me the ID of the album. Now you can see there's a problem here. It says I'm getting the value, but it's not guaranteed to be an integer. So let's come down to show potential fixes and choose add explicit cast. 
And so it puts this little thing in the front here. It says, make sure that this is an integer and then we'll convert it into something that we can use to look up by an integer. The next line down says instead of data grid view two, uh, one, let's change it to two. And instead of the album source, let's change that to tracks. So let's do a track, um, tracks binding source. Okay, so that apparently is gonna work. Um, I'm gonna cross my fingers and see what happens. Okay, I got the app up and running. I'm gonna try loading the albums and they show up here. Now I'm gonna click on help and you can see that it went to the database and selected three items. So each of these has a various numbers of tracks in them. So this shows us the track and uh, all of the properties that are there. Now we're not quite done yet because I wanted to show you what uh, foreign keys can do when it comes to joining tables. Okay, so that kind of takes us to the end of this part where we're trying to put two tables on the screen. We didn't do exactly joins in this lesson, but we did use results from two different tables. So that kind of gets you a one step further to the end. Now take a look at what's coming up. We're going to do UML diagrams and a few other things. So stick around and we'll keep learning SQL together.